Hello friends, my name is Ghost Raven and let me welcome you back to my gameplay, it's my let's play of the Assassin's Creed 2. I hope you're having a good day, but if you don't, don't worry, the things will get eventually better and you will get through anything, trust me, okay? Right now just sit back, relax, enjoy and let's get into this, let's continue in the story mode. Monterigioni, exactly, yeah, let's go back. If everything is going to work fine, that is. Uh, yeah, messenger. And I... <laughs> cannot read through that, because the game is on the SSD, so that's why. I mean, yeah, I played this like a five minutes ago and everything was shaking, the whole screen, so I have to, you know, restart the game and play this again, I don't know why. So um, I'm recording this for a second time, hopefully everything is going to work exactly like it's supposed to, so we'll see. Monterigioni, okay, let's read about this. We got time, we can do this. Building in 13th century. Oh, really? By the overlords of Siena, Monterigioni was actively involved in the defense of Tuscany against Florentine attempts to gain more territory. At the front of this conflict was the auditory family, who became the city's rulers and protectors. Yeah, it makes sense, it was auditory who constructed Monterigioni's famous walls, which can still be seen today. I mean, Monterigioni, <laughs> it exists in real life, but I don't think it was built by the Auditores family. I mean, Auditores are fictional family, as far as I can tell. <laughs> they weren't real. Maybe they were, but not in this context. Although standing in opposition to Florentine desires, the Auditore had cordial relations. Cordial, I think. With the Medici family, largely due to their collective Florentine roots. Okay, makes sense. You know, <laughs> neighbors. Montaligioni successful. They went to the attacks from Florence. Well, great friends. Yeah, <laughs> we get attacked from the Florence. Until, oh, this is some time in the future. Okay, 1554. The city was betrayed. Giovannino Zetti. The keeper of the garrison and the Florentine exile was allowed to return to Florence in exchange for the keys to the city. Traitor. Extraordinarily, the Auditore were allowed to continue the rule of Montergioni after under Florentine leadership, showing that the Magici could not forget their friends. Well, at least something. I mean, yeah. Tough luck. Tough times. Oh, another one. <laughs> okay. Let's read about Mario, shall we? Okay. I put a timestamp, so if you don't want to see this, if you want to see just the missions, you know, you can skip right into it. So, let's just hear about Mario Auditore. One of the several condottieri patrolling the Tuscan countryside, Mario Auditore played a significant role in the Battle of Anghiari, alerting Micheletto Adendolo to the appearance of the several dust clouds over the road, which would signal the surprise advance by the Milanese troops. Thanks to Mario, the Milanese attack was foiled. Oh, now it's Florentine won the battle. Mm hmm. Well, the Mario sided with Florence. For most of his career, he defended the interests of his own town, Monterigioni. Mm hmm. Okay. The railway in Florentine attempts to see the Tuscan territory. Oh, Mario's younger brother, Giovanni. Yeah, he's our uncle. Moved to Florence in 1454 to pursue the career in banking. Mario stayed at the family's villa in Monterigioni, stating in a letter to Giovanni that he preferred fighting like a man <laughs> to filling out balance sheets. Yeah, okay. So he's going to teach us some cool stuff, I guess. Let's talk to you, uncle. Casa Dolce Casa. I think that means home sweet home, but I'm not sure. I mean, I haven't learned Italian language. I want to learn, I like this language, thanks to this game, but anyway. Explore the Villa of the Torre with Mario. Let's do it right away. Tell me everything. They executed father for treason. Federico and Petruccio too. And they came for me. Do you know why? I have no answers, uncle. Only a list of names taken from a man who wished me dead. I still can't believe they are gone. Don't worry. We will make sense of this. I wish I shared your optimism. Come on, keep pace. We're almost there. I think you will find much to like in Monterigioni. I thought Monterigioni was an enemy of Firenze. For now. 
Next year it will be its friend, the year after its enemy again, and on and <laughs> okay. on. I cannot keep track, so I have stopped trying. These are honest, hard-working people. Our shops may only carry simple goods, but they're well-made and dependable. There is a chapel here, too. The Prete seems a nice enough fellow, but I have never been much of a believer. <laughs> Did you know the Villa Auditore is almost 200 years old? It was built by my great-grandfather. A strange man who carried all kinds of secrets. Yeah, I read it in a codex. I mean, database. Of them yourself. With all the fighting that's been going on, this place has started to get a bit rough around the edges. I wish I could do something about it. But I just don't have the time or money to fix things up. Guess that's life, huh? I think. Here we are. Casa Dolce oh, I was right. So, what do you <laughs> okay. Think? It's most impressive, Uncle. Well, looks it's like mess. To be honest, believe me, I'd have a shining again if only I had the time. Now that you have had the tour, you should go and outfit yourself. My men in the market are expecting you. Return here when you're finished, and we'll begin. Begin? Begin what? I thought you'd come here to train. No, uncle. I came here to escape Firenze, and I intend to take my family further still. But what about your father? He'd want you to finish his work. What work? My father was a banker. Wait, he did not tell you? I have no idea what you're talking about. Ma che me combini, Giovanni? Where to even begin? Go and fetch the gear in the market. It will give me time to think. But... But that's that. <laughs> we'll talk more later. So what I'm is this all about? Need. And if you find yourself in need of rest, I've prepared a room for you on the top floor of the villa. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I will definitely use it, but let me just see this because I saw in the database. A board memory, no, I don't want to do that. Let's see the database. Latest entries. Yeah, the Villa Auditore. Yeah, and there's this, um, Griff. <laughs> that mark, you know, that strange thingy we have to find out. Constructed in 1290. The Villa Auditore is an important medieval priest of early Renaissance architecture. This villa's wonderful symmetry and ordered geometry were a revelation for its time. Okay. Not only concerned with aesthetics, Domenico Auditore, Ezio Auditore's great grandfather, designed his home to a double as a fortress and a training ground, looking out for looking out both over the city that it protects and the Duskin Plains. Nice. After Florentine tag in 1320 left the facade damaged, probably it wasn't repaired from that time by the looks of things, I mean it looks terrible, I'm sorry to say that, but it really, really does. The present facade was erected and a painting gallery was added into, not into, to the interior. Domencio, or Domencio, I don't know, was more than just an architect and a warrior, he was also a skilled engineer, okay, got you. Recently discovered hidden compartments and rooms with mechanisms blocking entry are several unique features of the building that make it a technological marvel as well as, as an architectural one. Oh nice, so hopefully you're going to find some secrets around this place. That'll be amazing. Okay, let me just see this. Oh, right here, some <laughs> QR code, I guess. <laughs> okay, this. Not suspicious at all. Okay, let's go here, Ezio. Come on, activate it. I know you cannot see this, but anyway, a known program compiled. Not yet. It's easier and easier to hack into Abstergo's mainframe. It's like I know what data I'm looking for. Like I've already lived it. Hmm. That sounds very strange. Infinite knowledge. Oh, this is Vietnam. Oh, burning Vietcong basecape. Mito. Or something like that. Yet Kong. Oh, inside this bazooka. Oh, he got these cigarettes on his helmet. They are freaking kidding me. Its mouth, its open mouth, delivers the kiss of death. Now oh, that's sad. Oh, it wasn't a piece of Eden, it's some photographs. And this is in quarantine. If you saw my brothers in arms video, you will know exactly in my series. If you didn't, go watch it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Members of the. Second Infantry Division advanced under a machine gun fire into the 
outskirts of Brest in France, so it isn't quarantine. But, yeah, what am I looking for exactly? Oh, on the helmet. Leading the young to their end. Yeah, that's pretty much it. The flames from its throat poke out their eyes. Union troops information. Beaufort, South Carolina. 18... 62, so during the Civil War. Yeah, Union troops, so the North. Yeah. Oh, there's it. Can you see it? Yeah. This monster did not come from man. The first pictorial representation of a gun. Of a gun? Well, it's gotta be this. Is this a piece of Eden? Seriously, the fourth one. Okay, it's passcode is found. Seventy two one one four. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we cannot see too much. You know, when I used to play this, I <laughs> every time I will collect new fragment of the truth, I will just play it all just to see if I can make something out of it. But I can't. You know, you have to collect pretty much everything to find out. What is this all about? So that's interesting. There's also a viewpoint we can synchronize, so let's do this. So we can see everything that's going on around this place. Yeah, there's one, exactly. Let's synchronize this. I mean, yeah, this city looks like mess. Total, total mess. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it's seen better days. Definitely, well, definitely had. 14 out of 73, so still 59 if I'm counting correctly. Okay, so let's buy ourselves a weapon, but I got one sword, so what do you mean? Why do I need another one? Hmm, okay. Buy a pair of greaves and dagger. Okay, what are greaves? Oh, nice, resistance 2.5. I don't know what it means exactly. I, would, I know what health means. I will get one piece of health basically and small weapon oh a dagger okay deflect to speed it's not too <laughs> quick and damage nothing to write home about but yeah better than nothing no weapons and no ammunition out of stock okay buongiorno i will see you next time and let me go into this oh <laughs> I need to go into the doctor or to the doctor either way, so that's good. Yeah, supplies. I will fill this up. Thank you. It will be 150 forins. Grazie mille, doctore. Yeah, and that was pretty much it, I would say. Yeah, select like the medicine. I know about this. There's medicine. And I don't need I have full health. Fortunately, now let me see the map. I just want to see what is in here. Well, not too much. Just blacksmith, doctor. What is this? Codex wall. Interesting. And memory start. Okay, let's do another memory. Might as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's strange that I get money from buying stuff. You know, that would be amazing if I go to a to a shop, you know, in the city. And they would actually pay me when I buy something. <laughs> like, mission completed, you bought a pair of socks. Here's 100 euros, take it. <laughs> okay, let's speak to Claudia. Don't worry, we're only staying here for a little while. I don't like it here. I want to go <laughs> Me neither, to be honest. Still looks like a mess. Mario, how do you go home? Where are you? Oh, that easy. Do I need to go this way? Oh, the game is stuttering a bit. Whoa, okay, there's a huge... Mm, huge model of the Monte Regioni. And which way do I need to go? This way? Oh, here you are, Mario. Can I talk to you? Salute, uncle. I did as you asked. And quickly, too. Pan fatto. Oh, thank you. Now, Grazie mille. No. As I said, we are leaving. Ezio, you barely held your own against Vieri. You won't survive a week on the road. 
If you want to leave, so be it. But at least do so armed with the skills and knowledge necessary to defend yourself. If not for me, for your mother and sister. Fine. Fair enough. Optimal. Fair freaking enough. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, learn how to fight from Mario. So, yeah. Show me what you got, old man. No offense. Swing a sword to be sure, but offense alone will not carry a battle. You must survive long enough to strike. I will teach you how to dodge. You mm -hmm. said my father was more than just a banker. No use dancing around it. Okay, let me just see this. I want to read about mercenaries. I bet you can pay those mercenaries to fight for you. Oh, okay, we will try this out definitely. Mercenaries were highly mobile in the Renaissance Italy, moving from contract to contract. Yeah, that's what mercenaries do, so <laughs> nothing new about that, by the way. I'm sorry that I'm pausing this, but I don't want to read everything. I study history, so I'm kind of intrigued by this, and I haven't played this in a couple of years, so <laughs> it's getting back to me all this knowledge, you know, and this interesting stuff. Professional captains called Condottieri, I yeah, heard this name before in Mario's database. And three, usually paid for by the cities, by cities, recruiting men for a fixed amount of time. Many of the four higher soldiers who served in Italy weren't even Italian. Okay, coming from the places like Germany, Switzerland, and Hungary. Yeah, we were part of the Hungarian, um, you know, territory in today's times, in the 15th century, so definitely <laughs> they were like our own mercenaries, when you think about it. In their perpetual struggle to dominate Italy, the Italian states hired mercenaries to wage war against their Italian neighbors. Yeah, and the soldiers, many of them had no code of honor, would often rape and sack freely. It sucks when they're sack and rape. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry about laughing. When the state was that was bankrolling them run out of money, the soldiers would have disband frequently to be hired to destroy the very city they had just fought to defend. Yeah. Anything or <laughs> everything the money can do for you, you see? Some mercenaries were honorable, fighting for the cause they were believed in. They believed in, but men such as these were few and far between. Where they existed, however, they were much sued after. I mean, yeah. Mercenaries with a code of honor and some principles. Yeah, that's something to look forward to and to look for. So, good stuff. Your father was an assassin, Ezio. I told you before. My father was a paper pusher. My father was an assassin. He was born and to kill. I find this difficult to believe. What of the list you carry? Do you think it's merely a catalog of debts? It holds what? the names of those responsible for your father's murder. I'm sorry that I'm not doing this quick step, I just want to hear the dialogue because, yeah, something interesting to, to hear, so... Right now we'll do the quick step... How? Like this? Okay. Okay, so... Nothing too hard. Quick step. I actually knew this without any training, but thank you, I guess. <laughs> I know the counter kills, man. Like something from an old parchment covered in arcane writing, perhaps? I guess. You have your father's blade. I figured you'd have the codex page in the table as well. Codex? See, a guide to the inner workings of the order, its origin, its purpose, and techniques. Our creed, if you will. Your father believed the codex contained a powerful secret. Something that would change the world. Perhaps it's why they came for him. Assassins, Templars, Godex pages. This is a lot to take in. You need to open your mind. Again. Always remember, nothing is free, everything is permitted. Well, guess. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> guess what? It's really, really hard to concentrate and to, you know, speak about these things. It can get, you know, <laughs> real overwhelming. 
I mean, I played the first game, so I know about this stuff, but Ezio didn't play it, so... Kinda makes sense. Okay, lock on on target. What are we going to learn now? Downs. Okay. Come on, hit me. Oh, you did. <laughs> you just did. Come on, hit me again. Yeah, you didn't. You're such a sissy. Oh no, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I knew about these things. Well, I need to learn as a master. Come on, man. I already knew all these things. Escape. I trust you believe me now? Yes. My father was an assassin. But why the need for such secrecy? Are you familiar with the Templars? One of several knightly orders formed during the Crusades. History teaches they were disbanded nearly 200 years ago in France. Only they weren't. Merely pushed underground where they continued their nefarious work. What work? The Templars seek dominion over man, and we, the assassins, are sworn to stand against them. Was Uberto one of them? Yes. And the other names on my father's list? Templars as well. That means Vieri. Just like his father, Francesco. <laughs> Likely the entire Pazzi family. <laughs> it would explain many things. Yeah, I would say so, definitely. Escape, okay, when well, locked, hold right mouse button and hold space button. Okay, so like this. <laughs> I don't use this too much. Yeah, it's. I don't like to escape the battle, you know. But anyway, we learned it, you know, just in case. Oh, defeat Mario, okay, let's do it. What did you say to me? Come on, take it. Take it, you. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, get me. Yeah, exactly. I oh, got you, man. You got so much health. Dunk. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well done, Nipote. You've really come into your own. Thank you, Uncle. For all you have given me. Your family. Such is my duty and my desire. I'm glad you had me stay. Good. You've reconsidered leaving. We sail for Spain in three days. But Nipote, I have given you these skills that you might be better prepared to strike against our enemies. And if they find me, I will. You want to leave Ezio? To throw away everything your father fought and died for? To deny your heritage? Fine. Come voi. Arrivederci e buona fortuna. Uncle, wait! Why is he so upset? How can he not be? Vieri's been harassing us ever since you first arrived. To be expected, I suppose. Given his heritage. Alright. I'm sorry, Uncle. I didn't mean to. You know, like that. Where are you? Go to Mario. Okay. Again to this room. Let me just find it. Uncle! Where is he? everyone they ride for San Gimignano to slay that snake Vieri oh okay let me see about Vieri Di Pazzi, the youngest member of the second most notorious Florentine banking family this kid knew how to burn right through his father's money outside of spending sprees involving weaponry exotic animals and clothes he was fiercely competitive Vieri hosted races of all kinds boating horseback riding running all of them rigged of course and get this, if through some amazing stroke of luck he ever lost, he'd invite the winner's entire family over for a victory dinner and serve them a meal to die for. You're joking, right? You must be joking, I mean. What? What the hell? I wish to join them. You'll find what you need at the stables. Yo. Know, I won't find horse, I guess, in the stables, but thank you. Okay, need to see mother. Quick step skill learned. Yeah, learn anything, everything, basically, what I knew already. So, thank you for <laughs> for nothing. Mother. Oh, she's praying. 
Claudia. Ezio, look at her. I still can't get her to talk. She spends all day and night in front of those feathers Petruccio used to collect. She can't let them go. I don't know what to do. Don't worry. She'll come back to us. I know it. I guess. Let's hope so. Yeah, this is the <laughs> interesting way how to integrate collectibles into the main game, into the, you know, main storyline. You can collect feathers, and when you collect some, you can put it right there. And there's something interesting that can happen when you collect all of those. We need like 97, it's quite fun, you know, nothing serious. Oh, nice statue. Who is it? Got no idea. There are places for... Um, pictures, I guess. Okay. Let's go and kill Vieri di Pazzi. I mean... Yeah, he's getting on my nerves. Pretty hard. Fight practice. I don't need this just yet. I got stuff to do. Can I buy something else? Let me see this. Oh, I can! I don't have too much money. Or do I? I can buy a letter spoiler. Sure, I will. Oh, letter chest guard. Yeah, let's do it. And this one as well. We got money for it. It's not such a big deal. What are weapons? I don't have money for this. Oh, I can buy a warhammer. Falchion. On city and sword. Hmm. Knife or dagger, I mean. Knife is better than everything, but it's too expensive. I don't need it. Okay, definitely see you. Okay, so appearance changed. Quite drastically, as you can see, you know, we got new pieces of armor. Looking pretty good, looking awesome, so we can go. We prepare for the battle. For the assassination, I would say. Oh, there's my horsey. I was admiring in the last mission. Yes, yeah, steal your horse. Steer and steal. Well, it's not stealing, it's, <laughs> it's from our own stables, basically, so... Yeah, we're not stealing anything. It's very fine. Not a wooden object, I would say. And no one else, either. Are you sure you want to go to Tuscany? San Gimignano? You bet you. Well, I have to accept twice. <laughs> okay. You have to be really sure to go here, you know? One accept isn't enough. Okay. Oh, this is a huge place. Hello there. Okay. Well, let me see this. Where's Mario? Buddies, can you tell me? I mean, this game still looks amazing for its, for its time. I mean, it's running like, I don't know, stuttering horse, but... Yeah, it still looks truly amazing. I like these flowers. I mean, it was such a beauty to look at when he first came out. And still, pretty nice. Pretty nice game, you know, graphic-wise. It shows its age, but not too much. Ezio, what are you doing here? Taking responsibility. Vieri troubles you because of me. <laughs> Vieri troubles us because he's a Templar, and we are assassins. Either way, I wish to help. Va bene. Then listen close. First, we must find a way inside the city. Though it seems Vieri expects us. He has sealed the gates and sent his men to guard them. Fortunately for us, the city is larger than his host. The southern gate suffers for it. So this is where we'll strike. Pronti? Pronti. What goes around? <laughs> Isn't that some kind of song? What goes around, around? What goes around? Never mind, of course. <laughs> Probably something from the 80s or something. Help Mario and his men assassinate Vieri di Pazzi. Well, he's mine. Oh, it's already dark. Good. I'm here, Mario. We can go. No issues. But where are we going? I mean, I like the atmosphere. Full moon. Looking nice. There's an opening, you know? All next right, to this wall. Here's how it is going to work. My men and I will distract the guards. Once we have engaged them, get yourself over the wall 
and find a way to open the gate. Take mm -hmm. these throwing knives. Oh, Use thank them you. to dispatch the archers. I'm ready when you are. Then let us begin. Okay, grazie mille for the knives. Ten of them. Thank you. Al attacco, yeah. Do your thing and I will open this up. San Gimignano. Okay, let's see this just quickly <laughs> to see what we are talking, basically. Named after San Gimignano, who is supposedly conjured up a dense folk to save the city of Modema from Attila the Hun. Oh, truly! San Gimignano was founded in the 3rd century. The city grew from the 10th century onward as a stopping point along the pilgrimage route to Rome. Yeah, it makes sense. Citizens or the travelers, the pilgrims had to stop somewhere, and yeah, and the city will <laughs> logically expand when it's on the route to Rome. Okay, in 1199, once the citizens grew wealthy, San Gimignano separated from the Bishop of Volterra and became self governing. The city's distinctive towers were created as its wealthy citizens competed to display how much money was actually in their pockets <laughs> in its heyday. The city had 72 towers, that's a huge amount of towers, let me tell you that for a fact. But the plague of 1348 decimated some Gimiano without money for upkeep, the town started to fall apart. The council appealed to Florence and Florence took control. Okay, so it's under Florence control. Some Gimiano, okay. Because of the plague? Can I kill you? Okay, how did you saw that <laughs> the knife go? Got no idea. Get. Let me kill you. But you will see the blade falling through the air. Yeah, I mean this. <laughs> this is one of those things I don't really like about this game. Then they can actually see what <laughs> when the knife is falling or flying through the through the air. I mean. It's hard to imagine that <laughs> these guys will have a time to, you know, see the knife, basically, flying through the air. Okay, but... Looks good. Yeah. Okay, so that was everyone, but I'm in a conflict, apparently, so I need to open the gate. I've hurt myself in the process, okay. And open this gate. Interact. Let's do this. Oh, I killed everyone. Nice job. Ah, and it's opened. Can I steal from you? <laughs> Maybe some knives. Yeah, we're in. Okay, follow Mario. Me too. I want you to distract those guards and keep them from raising the alarm. Hopefully, it will buy me enough time to find and silence Fieri. Va bene. Wait, nipote. Take a few of my men with you, just to be safe. Come join me once they're dealt with. Bene, Mario. Uncle. Ten kill targets. Oh, and I've got these mercenaries around me. Whoa. <laughs> Where did you spawn <laughs> into this location? Man, what the hell? Yep. I mean, the popping in the Altair's... No, Altair's Chronicles. The Bloodlines was crazy, but this is, this is even more so. I mean, what the... Can I take uh, the short blade and just see this? Come on, hit me! Yeah, nice. And you too, come on. <laughs> okay, that's the same animation from the Assassin's Creed 1. This isn't. And I love this very much, you know, like he sl <laughs> slices his throat. I mean, why am I laughing like Madman, but it's surely nice to see. Yeah, you know, one should kill him from the back. I mean, that's something that makes sense. And I'm wanted, apparently. For what? Did I kill like 10 guys? Are you kidding me? Really? <laughs> uh, truly, that was... That was the least of my worries, I would say. Oh! Jesus, the popping is... <laughs> Are they gonna attack me? You know, let's just walk away. And nothing is happening, okay, everything is fine. I can blend, so... Okay, they're not <laughs> aggressive in any way. Oh, there's someone injured. What happened? 
Ezio, your uncle's under attack and needs help. Go to him. Where is he? We were just behind him, and he was fine. Oh, there's too many of you. Come on, attack them. Oh, real. Oh, some palazzo, but we'll hear about this later. Okay, fine, very Pazzi. We'll do. Well, I want it. Just what I wanted. <laughs> God, that was so lame. Come on. Yeah, let's let's give you like this. Oh, you. <laughs> yeah, I will kill you too. Get it. Get in here. Come on. No, no, no. Come on here. Corrupt. Okay, still not right. See, it's working. I can. I can. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel it. Just a pure accident. Yeah, I mean, it makes complete sense that the poster is around here on this roof. Yeah, video games, I love them. <laughs> okay, let me go to the database because I saw something. Something about Palazzo. Palazzo Comunale. Okay, what is this all about? Towns Hall was built in 1288 as a seat of municipal government. Yeah. Oh, not too many. Things to read. As befits the city of Towers, one of the council's earliest acts inside their new home was to construct the Torre Grossa on top. The Podesta took up the residence at the Palazzo Comunale in 1337. Okay, fine. Nothing too intriguing. But yeah, let me find Vieri di Pazzi. He's, well, this way, somewhere. On the tower, I reckon, but I'm not too sure. We will see. Okay, no guards, no archers, no one. So I can go right up, and no one will stop me, basically. If I, <laughs> only gravity will. But yeah. Okay, do I need to climb this thing? No. There it is. Francesco and Vieri. It's set. Vieri, you will remain here to coordinate the mercenary. Mercenary. Francesco will organize our forces in the city oh, and send word when it's time to strike. Jacopo, your job is to calm the citizens once the deed is done. What of that Ubriacone Mario? He continues to harass my forces and I fear he'll discover what we intend. He's always been trouble. Just like that bastardo brother of his. Then let me reunite them, father. There will be plenty of time to clean up the refute when we're finished. Now, is there anything else? Muy bien. May the father of understanding guide you. May, May the, the father, father of, of understanding, understanding guide you. Templars. Comandante! Comandante! What? Mario Auditore has invaded the city. He comes for you. <laughs> Then let's not keep him waiting. I bet. Okay, guys. Don't get yourself killed. Assassinate Fieri di Pazzi. Where is he? Oh, up there. Oh, there isn't a way how to go from the front, so I will use this. Come on, grab. Good. Now let's do this stealthily. Maybe. There isn't anyone. Okay, looks good. Looks pretty fine. Got my hidden blade selected. I don't know if it's going to do much, but yeah. Can't kill you from here. No, not like this, but from this position. Uh, no. Yeah, exactly. I'm here, so it didn't work out at all. Okay, I will kill everyone and then finish Fieri di Pazzi. No, you will not. Can I? Can I? No. Oh, I can grab you like this and then slice your throat. Of course. Good. <laughs> yeah, there you freaking go. Same animation from the Assassin's Creed 1. And attack me. Okay. And it's one on one, Fieri. Now let me take a hidden blade. It will be more stylish. Yeah, like that. Nice. Okay. Good. What are you and your allies planning? Is this what my father discovered? Is this why he was killed? I'm sorry. 
Were you hoping for a confession? Pezzo di merda! Vorrei solo che avesse sofferto di più! Hai avuto le fine che meritavi! Spero che Brooke... Enough, Ezio! Show some respect. Respect? After all that's happened, do you think he would have shown either of us such kindness? You are not Fieri. Do not become him. Che la morte ti dia le pace che cercavi. Requiesca in pace. Take this. Read it when you have the time. Our work here is finished. Let us return to the villa. Okay, uncle. I love this. I love that he's so rash and emotional. And then he will actually change. I love this arc. You will see about that. But it's iconic line, you know, Requiem Scarimpache. Ezio is using this in another assassinations throughout all the games, and I love that. That, you know, he's. <laughs> he will learn these things, you know. He is able to admit, like, he, I'm wrong, you know, I can do better. And I can, you know, show some respect to the enemies, which I quite enjoy. But let me see this, there's some letter we can read through. By the way, there are conspirators, I haven't <laughs> seen this just yet. Yeah, you can see different conspirators. If you play the recent games, this is basically like that, you know. Although you cannot kill your targets in any order you want. This is just, a, you know, for the show. Like, Vieri Pazzi is dead because, yeah, he got this icon over his head. Umberto Alberti, there's Francesco De Pazzi. And there's some Venetian, someone in Tuscany, Rodrigo Borgia. Oh, we know his name, so he's the main Templar, the Grand Master, if you will. Master. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to be, you know, specific. I'm trying to uh, talk correctly, and that's something happens. And we don't know about this one. So that's great. Let me go to the database. Recent entries. No, those are... Those... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> For that enter, you know, button. Yeah, from Fra Giocondo. Okay, let's read through this. Mr. Francesco, I have done as requested and spoken with your son. I agree with your assessment, though only in part. Yes. Pieri is brash and prone to act without forethought. And he has a habit of treating the mercenary like playthings. I have received reports of at least three men being disfigured as a result. But I do not think him, as you put it, beyond repair. Rather, I believe the solution to be a simple matter. He seeks your approval, your attention. These outbursts of his are a result of insecurities born out of a sense of inadequacy. He speaks of you often and fondly and expresses a desire to be closer to you. So, if he is loud and foul and angry, I believe it is simply because he wants to be noticed. He wants to be loved. Oh, poor thing. Act as you see fit on the information I've given you here. But I must ask that we end this correspondence. Were it to discover the nature of our conversations, I fear what might become of me. Yours in confidence, Fra Giocondo. Fra Giocondo, okay. Yeah, I mean, I should feel bad for him. For everything he's done. He was dancing on the graves of my father and my brothers. And I should be, you know, sympathetic, because he wants to be loved by his father. Yeah, screw that. Man, and screw you. Where am I supposed to go? I don't even know. I'm so... <laughs> I'm so pissed off. Okay, let's talk to Mario, uncle. And here he is, our campione Ezio. Oh, oh hey, hey, Ezio. Ezio! I see you Grazie mille. starting the celebration. And why not? You've done us a great service, nipote. With Vieri dead, La Toscana will grow quiet once more. Do you know what that means? Basta lavorare. Si passa tutto il giorno a bere. E a buttare. What? 
What? It's true. <laughs> Come, it's you. Walk with Jeez. You. Yes, uncle. A change of plans, learn about the villain, discover the codex pages hidden there. Okay. The Sounds intriguing. Spaniard. He is Rodrigo Borgia, one of the most powerful men in all of Europe, and leader of the Templar Order. Which makes him responsible for the murder of my father and brothers. Yes, and he will kill you too, given the chance. Then I must stand against him if I wish to be free. But not until every other Templar has fallen to my blade. Father's list will guide me. Where will you go next? Firenze. Francesco de Pazzi will share the fate of his son. A sensible next step. No doubt he intends evil for the city. All right. That's enough grim talk for one night. I'll be in my study if you need me. Okay, might as well. My uncle gave me. Might as well do this. I read this already. <laughs> yeah, Messer Francesco. Yeah, I read that. So I need to go and see Mario, I guess. One more time. Might as well do this. Are you here, Uncle? Yeah, there you are. Look familiar? On the codex pages. Yes. Your father managed to find and translate a few before he... Here. This is not your father's work. Someone else has translated it. Leonardo da Vinci, a friend. Do you see the way the words cross from one page to the next? There is something underneath it all. Some kind of map. Mm. Where is it supposed to lead? Your father and I managed to make out bits of a prophecy scrawled across these pages. It was written by an assassin like us, who long ago held a piece of Eden. His name was Altair. Wink, wink. He spoke of something powerful and ancient hidden beneath the land. What is it? What indeed? Solving that little mystery is exactly why we collected these pages. Then let me help. It's time I take on my father's work. All of it. I start with the page I took from Bieri. Leonardo will decode it for us. Ben, return here when time permits, and we'll add it to the wall. Sounds good. Sounds pretty fine. Reached the villa's viewpoint, but I already did this. I'm too quick for you, man. Codex pages locations are revealed on a map. Yeah, I know this. Use the map to locate objectives and side quests. Thank you, thank you, but yeah, <laughs> that's nothing new. I've already been doing some side quests, so yeah. And I again have to synchronize this view. Not that I'm complaining, I mean, but yeah, we'll do that. It's just a tutorial message we don't need to do, so I will do it. No worries. Oh, it looks better than before. I would say collect four philosophical codex pages. Oh, you mean around this place? Okay, okay, let's go back. I mean, down. Okay, there's one. You're too lazy to collect it? Uncle? Or what? Let me check the map. Let's see this. Well, the one is all the way out here. Okay, so let's do this one. First. Okay, let's go through this space. Yeah, right. Going the right way, I think. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, where is it? On the roof somewhere, or what is this? Oh, okay, another chest. Let me take it. Oh, and there's some statue. Yeah, there are special collectibles. I remember them, but we will do those in another episode. Because I would spend too much time, you know, finding them all, so... <laughs> I wanna do this, you know? Hold on to the main storyline. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's another one. I don't want to collect any of those because I'll forget which one I got, and... <laughs> it's going to be, you know, tricky. Later on, so... Let's do the codex pages first. And there is a feather. Okay, I can take that. At least I think that's a feather. Yeah, that's it. 
I will need to use a guide to find them all because I got no idea where they are all. I mean, <laughs> there's no map um, to buy, you know, that would reveal all the locations of these collectibles. I mean, this is the last game that's doing this. In later games, you can find, you know, map. You can acquire them for in-game money. And they will reveal the locations, you know, like in Black Flag, different shanties, and, you know, different collectibles, basically. So you can find them pretty easily. Like that, you know, they will unlock themselves on map, like an icon. And things like that, so yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I don't really like the collectibles, which you have to, you know, look so hard for them. <laughs> what am I saying? But yeah, I mean, I don't know which game done it, but yeah, um, I got no idea, but you would have to collect uh, some percentage of the collectibles, they wouldn't appear on a map, and when you collect it, like, I don't know, 30% or something like that, or 25, you will get, you know, like a map unlocked in the shop, and you could buy a map which will reveal the positions of the other ones. So that means if you spend your time and actually effort to find some of them, like one quarter of them or something like that, I don't know, I'm just making things up. And if you, you know, wanted to find all the remaining ones, you could buy a map, you know, and they will show up on your map. So, yeah. That's, that's a nice compromise, really. It doesn't force you to buy it. It's no on you. <laughs> if you want to, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. But I personally like to, you know, find some balance between them because, yeah, I'm compulsive about that. <laughs> I want to complete every game on a hundred percent, find everything, experience everything, which can be, you know, time-consuming sometimes. For example, when I was playing Assassin's Creed 1, I wanted to collect all the flags by my own without any guide, and I would spend like three hours looking for one flag. Not three hours, like half an hour or one hour. Three hours to finding all the flags. And it could have got so much. <laughs> so tedious and so boring and so time consuming. It was, it was crazy. But anyway, let's talk to Maria. Claudia, I'm sorry. Maria is my mother, of course. Salute, Claudia. This is outrageous. Why? What's happened? He's making me work. His father was here. I'd never <laughs> outrageous. Be stuck a desk like this. And what are the terms of this supposed enslavement? Since someone decided we're going to stay here, Tio Mario suggested we try and find the money to repair the villa. Problem is, there isn't any. I bet I can bring in some money. Oh, great. More work for me. Well, benissimo. If you start paying for improvements to the town, I'll keep track of them in this book. And since I have nothing better to do, I'll also make note of any objects you bring in from the outside. If you actually get this place up and running, travelers might visit and spend money. Although I doubt anyone will want to come this far out of the city. But if they do, I'll keep the money we make in this chest. You're going to have to show up to take it to the bank yourself. Because when it gets full, I'm just going to take the extra cash for myself. Capito? Dio. Capito. Okay, so nice economy thingy going on in Assassin's Creed 2. I really like this. Too bad something like this doesn't exist in newer games. I mean, something, some variation of this exists, but yeah, this was really nice, you know, simple to follow, but yeah, intriguing to unlock. Yeah, so in 20 minutes, we will get like 220 florins into our chest, basically, and we can pick it up. When we go back into the Montarigioni, so yeah, and it's basically like a you know summary. We can buy and upgrade different buildings like art merchants, bank, blacksmith, doctor, tailor, you know, and the city itself will rise in value, which makes sense, really. And then we have renovation, <laughs> the most interesting and important building of all, brothel. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be gold mine for money. And we got mines, church, the altar barracks, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Thieves Guild, well, and collections, yeah. Even if we collect codex pages, feathers, model seals, paintings, 
portraits of Ezio targets, we will get, you know, a boost to the overall value of the city. And on weapons, armor, armor of Altair. <laughs> it's something to look forward to, you will see. Okay, collect money. We don't have anything. Okay, there's a zero, big zero, which is just great. Okay, let's talk to you two while we're in here. Hello there, buongiorno. Buongiorno. Is there something wrong? Yes, sir, Mario hired me to deal with this mess, but I'm an architetto, not a miracle worker. Without money, I can't fix any of these buildings. And if someone brought you money? Eh, then we'd be in business. Uh, you must be Ser Ezio. Am I right? That's right. Uncle, I like this architetto. <laughs> he gets very observant when he can smell money. If you want to fix up this town, like everyone. you need it. I have a price list here for new shops and renovations. Just bring me gold, make a choice, and I'll begin at once. If I build you a shop, you, as the landlord, can purchase goods there at lower rates. If you invest more money in the shop, you get an even greater discount. As for renovations, well, you'll be bringing the town and villa back to life. As Sir Mario tells me, that was very important to your great-great-grandfather. Plus, when you buy shops and renovations, you'll be increasing the number of people who visit, causing your income to increase. So, let's take a look, shall we? Might as well do it. Well, let me just see this. Yes, yeah, so the art merchant. This sells paintings. Renovating the shop will increase the city value. For one thousand, why the hell not? Okay, let's do the art merchant. At least I can buy some maps and some paintings. Taylor, yeah, let's do a Taylor also. Why not? And bank as well. Yeah, all these buildings, which are really for the function itself. Yeah, it looks quite nice. And we have <laughs> we're the lines, church, military barracks, barracks. Jesus, thieves guild, and well, well, well. Okay, I don't have too much money so I cannot you know purchase anything else so let's go back back yeah you too my friend oh you will stay here more energy on its value well was increased so that's pretty fine and what else go and speak Mario with Mario in his office okay let's do it hello uncle Ezio my boy I think it's time showed you something. Sounds intriguing. Oh, second entry. Liking this. Where are we going? Codex wall. Oh, do I need to give my codex? No, no, I already did. Okay, eagle vision. Ah, I don't see too much. It seems like some kind of map. We'll see about that later, I guess. I need to collect all of them. I'm here, uncle. Come on. What do you have to show me? Hmm? <laughs> Lost for words. I can't tell. Whoa, this looks amazing. Looks pretty fun. This is the sanctuary. It was built by my great grandfather to honor the memory of the Assassin Order and protect its secrets. Look around. These are the assassins who guarded the freedom of humanity when it was most threatened. And this is the armor of Altair. Little is known about Altair's life, but his armor is light and very strong. I give it to you, but I don't know how to retrieve it. My great-grandfather told me it would remain locked away until all its protectors were made whole. I heard rumors of crypts located throughout Italia, hidden tombs filled with treasure, where these six were moved centuries ago. Maybe they have something to do with it. In my younger days, I sought the six myself, with no success. Perhaps you will have better luck. I guess we will see. In order to achieve perfect synchronization with Ezio, you have to get that armor. Oh, okay, so Ezio himself got this armor for himself, so he can play this. 
Statue Gulangol. Who is it? Atop this pedestal stands a statue of Gulangol. The main Mongolian assassin he used a bow and arrow to shoot Genghis Khan's horse. And it looks like something is missing from the pedestal. And definitely looks like it. What about this one? Darius. Oh, male Persian assassin he used his hidden blade to kill Circes. He was the first recorded use of a hidden blade. Okay, okay. I didn't play it. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The DLC about first blade, but there's Darius as a main character, so I think this is like a spoiler <laughs> bit from that part. If it's still accurate. I mean, yeah it is. I guess. I haven't played it. We'll see in time, but if it is, it's amazing. What about this one? Wei Yu. By the way, I really want Assassin's Creed to be featured in Japan or China. I mean, that would be amazing. The male Chinese assassin, he was speared to kill the first Chinese emperor. Queen Chi Wan. Wow, okay, so he's using the spear. Is this... Are you freaking kidding me? It's so interesting to go back to this game when you play like Assassin's Creed Origins. I don't want to speak too much about this, but Amonet is actually a character in Assassin's Creed Origins, and that's everything I got to say. Yeah, she killed Cleopatra with a snake. I won't say anything. I, you will see when we go into play Assassin's Creed Origins. Iltani, who is this? Female Babylonian assassin. She poisoned Alexander the Great. Okay, so poison. She used. And what about the last one? Who is he? Leonius. Male Roman assassin. He stabbed. Are you kidding me? Caligula with a dagger. So. The legends. And the greatest one. Right in here. Altair himself. Eagle. That's simply amazing. That's so great. You know what? Where are we going to finish this episode? I mean, this is appropriate time. Let me see if there's something else to, you know, see and do. Around Montaragioni for the time being. And if it's not, no, there isn't. So, you know what? Let me go back just real quickly. Let's stand in this hole of legends, basically. And let's go and dream that one day we will join these great assassins. Let's let's stand in the middle, you know, and let's finish this episode. Yeah, like this, it's going to be, yeah, pretty nice. So thank you very much for watching this video, my friends. I truly hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I hope you had fun. And if I made your day better, I'd be really, really glad. So thank you once again. Stay healthy, stay safe. Like, dislike, share, subscribe, comment, do whatever you want. I'll be really, really happy if you leave me some kind of feedback, you know, something to think about and talk about. And until we see each other again, God bless, bye bye my friends, and Raven out.